This project came about in an interesting way about maybe, I don't know, half a year ago or so. Um, when we were sitting down, we were saying that we all feel like Buckminster Fuller has been so important in our lives as, as a source of driving futurism. Um, and then everything he talks about kind of feels like, even though it was 50 years ago, it kind of feels like it's, it's real now, right? So, uh, and, and this is why we're here. So we basically agreed that we are at the fork in the road, which Bucky talks about. I've been a futurist for, I don't know, almost 20 years. I used to be in the music business. I, I write books, I make movies. Um, and my key topic has been for the last five years, technology and humanity, the convergence of man and machine, uh, and all of the consequences of that. And as part of that work, I, I kept reading Alvin Toffler and all the, all the old you know, futurists that I look up to. And then Buckminster Fuller came back into the spotlight of his whole philosophy being basically that we will have all the tools, but are we going to use them in the right way? Right? I think Bucky actually said, we're inventing all the, techno the right technology, but for the wrong reason. Right? And that set me off on this path of saying, we are actually, this is post-COVID or with COVID, we're catalyzed into action now. This is the, the point of unique action also because of COVID. So uh, as of today, we have a simple website, website uh, forkontheroadproject.com. It's really very simple. Don't spend much time on there. It's going to vastly improve, hop hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. But this is the skeleton of, on, the, on the website. And we have a, a medium project also, the Fork on the Road. So one of the reasons that I think this is now is because uh, you know, and to, to pinpoint the headline here, you know, we discussed this in and out when, when we started writing the manifesto, and we really think that this decade may very well decide if we're going to live as a species or not. Uh, when we're looking at climate change, when we're looking at AI, when we're looking at genetic engineering, uh, that's kind of, it's all going to happen in the next 10 years, right? I mean, it's, I know people keep saying that about every decade, but, but it's kind of like, it seems more timely now, and it's also driven by this, right? The corona crisis has this opportunity for wide-scale change because people are considering paradigm changes now, right? Everybody is saying, okay, if we didn't think it was possible that we can do this, we did it with corona, the vaccine, and so on. And that's going to be transferred to climate change, we believe. It's going to be transferred to other debates. And so we are at the point where nothing seems untouchable or impossible anymore. Like in Europe, you know, we have the stimulus packages that's tied into the Green Deal. Right? So you're going to, you want to get money, you have, to, you have to actually follow the Green Deal as well. So we think this is a very unique point, kind of like after a world war or so, you know, where it's like reboot time and things are up for discussion. And we'll, we'll discuss if you agree with that or not. But so here's the bottom line definition of what this project is. It's open, public, global, non-commercial, non-partisan. This is not an initiative for us to get more speaking work. It's not <laughs> an initiative to get more branding on any of us. It's basically a, a collective, okay? And we have some more, uh, some more detailed bullets. You know, I'll take myself out so you can see them better. So we call it a collective. A true collective in the sense of that we're, we're equal in the collective. We have people who, have, who are different experts and different topics and the rising tides will flood all boats, but it's a collective, right? The purpose is to inject urgency without being dystopia, right? in a nutshell. Right? So uh, urgency means ten, we have 10 years to get it right. We're not too late, but we really only have that time. Uh, not fixing climate change will be irreversible in 20 years not dealing with AGI or coming up with rules about technology, uh, geoengineering, and so on, right? So we want to provide positive future perspectives and catalyze real action. Uh, and the way we want to do that is by public debate and, of course, by media, which all of us are quite good in. But the, really the goal is to uh, launch a global Sign the Manifesto campaign. And I, that's going to require a lot more people than we currently have here on, uh, assembled, right? But basically, uh, uh, getting people who, who are influential to go behind the campaign, kind of like the business roundtable, you know, with the stakeholder economy, but on a larger level, uh, to, sign, I'm, to say, I'm going to sign the manifesto, but I'm going to take real action on the bullets that we have pointed out, which we'll get to in a second, right? So that is kind of the long-term view. Uh, we're guided by open source and Creative Commons principles, which means whatever you add in, 
you can build on top and do something else with it, like people do in open source, right? There's no real ownership of those, obviously, <laughs> of the ideas, but you know, it's basically those are the kind of cornerstones, right? Uh, we're initiators, not owners. We're not the warrants. We're not the, uh, you know, we're not saying what is being done. We just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Four, t four core topics, which we'll talk about later. Uh, when we, it's about the topics. And the signatories of the manifesto, which we'll discuss in a second, uh, we want the signatories uh, are invited to contribute in multiple ways. You know, for example, getting other signatories, <laughs> uh, contributing content, participating in online shows. It all depends how much time you, you want to donate to the cause, so to speak. Um, and so, um, some keywords, just to make it more graphic, urgency. That is the number one keyword. Why is it happening now? Because right now is the time when people are thinking about making real changes. That, that is the unique time frame that we're in with the sort of beyond COVID scenario, right? Hope, positive scenarios, not scenarios of dystopia, we're all gonna die, AI is gonna kill us, Black Mirror and so on, you know, all that sort of stuff, right? First the robots take our job and then they kill us, right? That's not our story. So it's about hope and positive perspective. It's about uh, pointing out the choices that we're making. The future is a choice, that's our mantra. I'm, I'm sure you, all of you would agree with that. Uh, leading to real action and finally to the sort of uh, ephemerally named good future. <laughs> I realize that, you know, it's, well, we realize that there is no such thing as a universal good future, but we just used it as the final destination, you know, as opposed to a bad future, Orwellian future. Those are the key words. Um, so, um, the goals to accelerate and supercharge a global debate. It, uh, that debate is going on, but not nearly enough. And who owns the, the debate of the future? It's the tech companies, right? That's not necessarily bad, but, but, but this is our reality. We'd like the civil society to be injected back into this. We want to create media, films, content conferences. Of course, that's kind of, you know, pie in the sky at this point, right? But, you know, get togethers that are powerful. And of course, we want to mobilize and influence the leaders in civil society, whoever they are. Um, because, you know, a lot of these components are political and uh, policy oriented. Not political in a partisan way, but in terms of society, right? Obviously, they have implications like this. Uh, the positive view, collaborate with all of the existing organizations, whether it's a World Economic Forum or, you know, uh, the, the Buckminster Fuller Institute, of course. Right? And whoever is out there, you know, if, uh, if we find it appropriate. And in the end, it's kind of starting a global movement, right? What we perceive as success would be something like in two years from now, the question that you're going to ask a politician or a CEO is whether they signed the manifesto. Kind of. You know. I know that sounds really crazy and ambitious. Right? <laughs> but, you know, that's playing with that, right? So, the levels of involvement, this is where you guys come in. Um, first, uh, of course, we want to get, first, before we do all of this, we want to get your feedback to see if there's anything really good about this and if you want to go behind it like we had intended. And then we want people to sign the manifesto, which is kind of done, but, but still up for debate for some of the details. And just say that you're a signatory. You know, right, you've seen the, the one-page or two-page document. It's also on the website. Uh, that's the first step. The second one is advice on what's missing and what we can do better. Well, you know, we being us, you know, basically what needs work. Right? And this is the crucial point, In, invite, involve other high profile signatories. Anyone that is a person that can increase the range of our discussions. Influential people. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, with a special aspect on diversity. So, you know, from all races, cultures, sexes, you know, we have way too many men as usual. Very important. We appreciate your support. You know, we're looking hard to fix that issue. Contribute content. You write a story. You can you can repurpose a story. You participate in Zoom events. Make your own videos. And then we have a gigantic Slack hub that's being developed to discuss the actual action items. So, climate change. What is our recommendation? What's your opinion? Technology regulation. 
uh, AI, AGI, you know, we're going to have all these kind of working things and they'll, they'll be done on Slack. You guys probably know the Slack, the collaboration platform. Um, very good thing. And finally, involve governments. Uh, wherever you are, I'm, I'm working hard on the Swiss government and with John Isles I'm working on New Zealand, which uh, in many ways already has a head start on these conversations. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know, it's really like that has already happened there. there so, All right, so the core issues and then we're going to kick off in the, in the discussion, okay? We are suggesting those four core issues and with a lot of debate they have emerged as the, as the issues without having op any opinion on the core issues except for climate change, I think where 100% agreement is there. <laughs> so climate change, humane use of technology, ethics of technology, ethics of AI, regulation, yeah, what's going to happen with technology in 10 years, um, sustainable economics, that's kind of uh, key word, sustainable capitalism, rebooting capitalism, new economics, people paying their profit, stakeholder economy, and the fourth one is human enhancement, longevity, transhumanism. You know, those are the kind of four key topics that, that we see for now. Of course, there are many, many others. But ideally, we'd like to get to the place where we can say we have some ideas and some action items that we all agree on and some that we don't all agree on. But, you know, all of those things, you know, when, when, the, when everything starts rolling, they're all inter intertwined, of course, right? So realizing that the economic circumstances impacting everything else. <laughs> <laughs>